Hello and welcome back. In this video I will just gather maybe seven or so different properties of the hat matrix which we are going to use in the next few sections. So let's go through them one by one and start with the first one. Let's see what we get. So number one. I want to show H is symmetric. And for reference I write that here the hat matrix is x, x transpose, x inverse, x transpose. And the significance of this matrix is that if we apply it to the output vector y, so the vector from data, then what we get is the fitted values y hat. So hat matrix, the name is a bit of a pun. It's the matrix which if you apply it, it adds the hat to y. So let's do that, h transpose h. So that is really trivial, this one. H transpose is X, X transpose X inverse, X transpose transpose. And I used the rule in the previous video too, the transpose swaps around the order of matrices. So the rightmost one is X transpose, so I need to transpose this. Then the middle one is X transpose X inverse, and I need to transpose that. And then I get X transpose and you see what happens. X transpose transpose is X. The inverse of a symmetric matrix is symmetric. So X transpose X inverse doesn't change when I transpose it. And this X transpose I just copy and that thing you recognize from the blue formula up here equals H. So that's that. Then H is idempotent, which means if I apply it twice, I get the same thing as if I applied once, h squared equals h. And that we have essentially just seen. So let's do that again. h squared is two copies of h, x, x transpose x inverse x transpose, that's the first copy, x, x transpose x inverse x transpose. Then if we group it like that, that's the matrix and the inverse, so these go away. So we are left with x, x transpose x minus one before the cancel terms and x transpose from after the cancel terms and that is h again. Then claim number three, three and four will be the same for identity minus h. So three is identity minus h is also symmetric. If I take the transpose, it stays the same. That's not really trivial, I do it, but I'll be very fast. Identity minus h transpose is identity transpose minus h transpose. Both are symmetric, so it's identity minus h. Four is a bit more interesting. Identity minus h is also idempotent. i minus h squared is i minus h times i minus h. Now I expand these brackets to get four terms. That's i squared minus h i minus i h plus h squared. i squared is i, identity matrix. h i is h, i h is also h, and h squared we have just seen earlier is also h. That comes out right, but there is this funny thing. We subtract h twice and add it once to get the i minus h we require. So here one has a feeling something is happening, but whatever, it was not difficult. Good, then next property, the claim is hx equals x. h is x, x transpose x inverse x transpose. Then I add another x. Then we have the situation again where we have a matrix and the inverse these cancel and the only leftover term is x. Easy enough. Six, the claim is identity minus h applied to x equals zero. And that's now trivial, namely we have just seen identity minus h x is x minus h x. We have just seen h x is x, so it's x minus x is zero. Good, so these are all easy. I'm just doing them here because we are going to use them in a little while. And the last one is the only one which is a bit different. Let's do that in two parts. So first I claim the vector hy is orthogonal to 
i minus h y. In two or three dimensions that would mean they are at right angles to each other and in higher dimensions it still means this only angles are a bit less intuitive so what it really means is the inner product is zero and just to be super clear these are factors in rn n is how much data we have so that's in the high dimensional space but still so let's try that so we have to show the inner product is zero Let's write that x orthogonal to y if and only if x transpose y equals zero. That's the technical definition. So we do h y transpose times i minus h y. And now we get to use all the properties we had. y transpose h i minus h y. Actually, we don't need so many properties. Is y transpose h i minus h squared y is y transpose h minus h y is zero since h minus h is zero good what we have now let me try sketch anyway even if it is high dimensional space so we have the vector y somewhere in rn and y can be written as h y plus i minus h y just because if i do it like this the h cancel and I'm just left with i y which is y. So I split this into two parts. Let's say h y is here and then i minus h y is here. And then what we have just shown is these two vectors are orthogonal. Good. And what we can do now is we can use Pythagoras theorem which says in a triangle like this with the right angle the length of the long side squared equals the sum of the length of the short sides squared. So what we get is by Pythagoras theorem is that the length of y squared equals length of h of y squared plus length of i minus h of y squared. We are not so sure about Pythagoras theorem in high dimensional spaces. I give a proof in the notes and it's very simple if you just don't worry and do it. It just uses the fact that we proved this product is zero to cancel the mixed term if you expand the square after you have split y into two. Good. And then we can just use that we know what hy is. So hy is y hat and the other term is y minus y hat and y minus y hat we called epsilon hat earlier that are the estimated errors or the residuals so we can write epsilon hat square here and this equation that is first quite neat and also we will see that comes actually in useful and helps us a bit to understand sometimes what's going on in particular sometimes these euclidean length squared let me just write out this one, that some epsilon i squared i from 1 to n, these are closely related to variances. So if I don't know, if I would write in 1 over n minus 1 there, then that would be the sample variance of the epsilon i hat. And equations like this help us sometimes to split the variance of the samples into components. So here that could turn into an equation of the form the variation in the given data can be decomposed into variation of the fitted values and variation of the residuals. Good, and I should say this here, some people, maybe most people even would use different notation here, that is commonly abbreviated as SST, where SS stands for sum of squares, and T, I believe, stands for total, and that thing here is then called SSR because the fitted values are obtained by looking at the values on the regression line and the R stands for regression. And that one here is then called SSE, sum of squares of the errors, that's the E. And people who write it like this get then the equation SST equals SSR plus SSE. Personally, I find it difficult to remember what these terms mean and which letters I need to write where with that you don't need to know anything special you just need to remember the notation y y hat and epsilon hat which for me personally is easier but whatever the equation is the same and that the last of the properties related to the hat matrix which i wanted to show you here okay so that is it for this video 
and we will jump straight into the next video where we will discuss Cochran's CRN. I'll explain what that is in the next video.